Welcome to Cape Chronicle. I'm Mike Rennick. As 2024 begins, Cape Girardeau Mayor Stacy Kinder joins us in the studio to discuss the city's progress over the course of 2023 and what new year what the new year has in store rather for Cape Girardeau. Mayor Kinder, thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, absolutely. It's always always good to catch up. And uh, as we as we kind of you know said in the beginning there, um, a chance to at this point of the year to mm -hmm. kind of reflect back on 2023 and look ahead. I know we're always yeah. looking ahead. Right. Don't have to be looking back a lot, but there's accomplishments. So yes, it's 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 it warrants uh, going through those. Well, for sure. And and you know our community wants to know what our government's doing for them, uh, how the the taxes are being used, and all that, and, and, and certainly if they're being used efficiently. So um, I have recently compiled a, a big list. It's not even totally comprehensive, but that's on the city website um, if you want to go look at it. But I just wanted to highlight a few of those things um, here today, uh, accomplishments from of the city from 2023. Sure, yeah, and I know there was like infrastructure, economy, oh. public safety, those were All over. some of the, yeah. you know, some of the cornerstones for you. So yeah, let's talk mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. a few that come to mind for you from 2023. Yeah. Well, just going back through uh, all of our departments, um, the airport, I think people would be surprised to know that 39,000 operations took place at our airport just last year. 39,000. 39,000. There are four flight schools operating there. Um, there's a new terminal taxiway and tea hangar uh, construction that's either already begun or in the in the process. Um, of course, in development, uh, we, we all have seen the major projects that, you know, sometimes inconvenience us, but, but sure. which have been, which have happened and have been completed. Um, and good news, Lexington Avenue is going to be uh, started very, very soon over the winter. Um, a lot of the, the, the paperwork um, got done there. That's been uh, put out for, con that's under contract now. And which stretch is that of Lexington? Um, the, the, the section that's, the the eastern most okay. section, okay. basically. Um, forgive me, I forget the street it starts, but all the way down to, to Highway 177. Okay, so like, like the Sprig area down? Yes, or, okay. and even farther west. And even farther, farther than west, that, okay. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, in, in the Park and Recs Department, um, the central pool renovations have begun. Those will be anticipated to be com completed this spring. That'll be great news. The Jefferson Park and Jefferson Aquatic Center was completed last year. Massive renovations and upgrades at Kappa Hall Park that people have probably all appreciated and, and seen. For sure. Um, and then there was a new partnership with Cape Public Schools that um, was created to increase youth sports participation that we're really, really excited about and have already seen great, great results there. Um, that is a great program. Yeah. It is a great program. Yes. I'm, in, I'm involved with heard. youth sports, yeah. you know, with, through the city and to see yeah. so many you know, teams and students that are getting an yeah. opportunity is yeah. it's pretty amazing. We're very excited about this this program too. Um, it goes into the schools and helps um, school groups create league teams, yeah. um, and that has been found to be a, a real uh, boost um, for, for kids. Um, and then, just real quick, I'll just rattle off some data. Um, our fire department received 5,800 calls for service last year. Um, they have developed the region's only dive team. Um, we have we have river uh, you know incidents that, sure. that they are heavily involved in. Uh, they've developed an in-house emergency medical tech program, which is great for our firefighters who want to get certified uh, in EMT. Our police department, this is staggering, um, received over forty-six thousand calls for service. Now that's very wide-ranging, um, forty-six thousand. Um, hmm. Sixty-three hundred reports were generated from that, where the the uh, police had to, you know, take some kind of action. Okay. Um, but from that, um, over 225 felony arrests were made in Cape Girardeau last year. Um, that's good news and bad news. Sure. I mean, right. <laughs> you know, we right. hate to yeah. hate to know that it's happening, but but. Uh, but the police are there. Police getting it took done. Took care of a lot of things. Yeah. Um, and you know, something I want to brag about with the, the the Cape PD too is that they last year began the crisis co-responder unit, mm -hmm. which is where um, a law enforcement officer, a psychologist, and a social worker are all engaged in a in a call um, to help respond uh, to an individual in a mental health crisis. Okay. Um, that has been tremendously beneficial for the individual, um, also for our police officers. Um, um, that unit received over 700 calls last year alone. Wow. So obviously something very needed um, and, and we're very uh, excited to see that see that happening. And they're, they're using some new technologies too, are they not? Yes, absolutely. I mean, we, we have the, we're increasing the footprint of the um, 
um, the the uh, shot spotter right. program. Shot spotter, yeah. uh, that's been very helpful for our, for our police department. Um, really, to it's a huge time saver. Number one, and also just gives them so much better accuracy about you know, shots, where shots have happened, okay. um, uh, data, evidence collection, things like that. Um, and then we have some um, li automatic license plate cameras that are that are happening, um, which has been uh, tremendous in helping um, uh, the police department locate, um, you know, folks who are driving around who uh, maybe are have warrants out. They need to talk to them. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that need to be. <laughs> Need to have a conversation. Yeah, yeah. So um, that's been that's been great. And then real quick, in our public works department, um, never want to overlook the public works department. Um, this was all amazing to me. Um, they inspected over 1,300 manholes. They repaired seven sanitary sewer mains, picked up 1,900 tons of leaves, 209 tons of limbs. They snow plowed 8,800 miles of streets and picked up 7,700 tons of solid waste and 1,900 tons of recycling. My goodness. So we've got a lot busy. of employees doing a lot of busy work <laughs> yeah. that make all of our lives better. Easier. Easier. Right. Yes. Exactly. Yes. Very much. Well, very that's much so. that's a lot. It is a lot. That's a lot. Um, yeah. And that's a very short list. <laughs> Go to the city homepage if you want to look at even more. So. so how about 24? 24. Well, more of all of that sure. will continue. That goes on every year. Sure. Um, a few things I wanted to just highlight. Uh, Rainy Park down in South Cape. Um, we'll get a new playground, new restroom, new shelter. Um, that will be, um, you know, uh, see some neat development there. Um, of course, the eclipse is coming. Right. And there's a big event that's going to be at the Sportsplex. Um, all of our Parks and Rec people, uh, along with Visit Cape, are helping put that together. You can go to visitcape.com slash eclipse to find out all that information. Um, the Great Cape Cleanup happens every year. That's on Earth Day, April 20th. Um, that's a that's a really neat event for the community. Um, groups get together and, and do some some really uh, helpful, um, nice pickup and and uh, you know patching up of park facilities mm -hmm. and things. Um, that's happening. Um, I will say too, um, the TTF seven committee will be reformed this summer. Um, you may be aware that uh, the TTF program is part of our sales tax that we that we see here in Cape and uh, um, that money goes towards large-scale uh, road projects and okay. so the committee forms for six months they will put together along with city staff a, a very detailed plan of, of what that uh, you know might entail and then um, it'll be up for a, a, a citywide vote um, in 2025. In 2025? In 2025. Okay. And then, of course, we have a big uh, tax proposal um, on the books right now happening this April 2nd, which is a uh, proposed property tax increase for residents of the city of Cape. Um, and basically what that is is a $0.25 cent increased uh, proposal for every $100 of assessed value in real and personal property that, that you may have. Um, again, if you go to the city uh, homepage, uh, there's a lot of information there, including um, what an individual might see pretty, pretty exactly in their own tax increase if this were to pass. Okay. Um, so you can, uh, we're encouraging everyone to, to consider that. Um, certainly that's part of the, <laughs> that's, that's an important part of the, the consideration. But, Absolutely. But that data is out there and we'd like everybody to, well, Mayor, to take a look. Well, thank you. You're welcome. We is will it? do this again. <laughs> that was quick. <laughs> There's a lot. There There's is a there lot. is a lot. Yeah. Thank you again for joining us for Cape Chronicle. The program is a collaboration among the Department of Mass Media Southeast, the City of Cape, and River Radio. Our executive producer is Anthony Shear, and I'm Mike Rennick. Thank you for watching.